Maybe you've been hand lettering for four days or four years, but what if you've been using the wrong brush pen this whole time? Today, I'm going to go over a few different brush pens and help you figure out which brush pen is the best for your hand lettering style. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. There are a lot of different categories when it comes to brush pens and even brush lettering as a whole. We could break them down many different ways and even go into little micro categories of different types of material or ink or colors. There are so many ways, but today I'm going to simplify it for you. And I want to start with talking about large versus small brush pens. I happen to have about a bazillion brush pens, maybe not quite that many, but I do have a lot. So I've gotten a bunch of them out to share with you. And I'm also going to tell you which ones I think are best for certain lettering scenarios. So let's start with comparing a couple of different sizes so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. For starters, how do you know the difference between a large and a small brush pen? The tip of the brush pen is actually only a little part of this, and it's not how I determine the size of a brush pen because there are other things that go into it. Things like flexibility and how easy it is for it to spring back up can all affect the size of your writing when you're using a brush pen. So I determine the size of a brush pen by how thick the strokes are. There are some brush pens that have a really long tip, so you might think that that's a large brush pen. But then there are others with a smaller tip that when you apply pressure, write with a surprisingly thick stroke. So in order to know whether a brush pen is a small or large brush pen, you really need to write with it. Well that, or you can watch a video showing how it writes, which is kind of why I'm sharing these with you today. And I actually have a playlist on my channel where I reviewed, I think 31 different brush pens. So please, please, please don't feel like you need to go out and buy new brush pens. If you want to see an example of one, I've probably done a video on it, but if not, please let me know. In fact, I'd love to know, maybe pause this video if you have an extra moment, um, but let me know what brush pen you'd like to see reviewed or sampled. I've done so many over the years, but it's actually been quite a while. So let me know if there is one that you'd like to see. So the samples that I've shown you here are what I consider to be medium to large size brush pens. I typically categorize medium and large in the same way because they tend to be somewhat similar, but also because even the largest of brush pens can kind of jump into the medium size category if you're not pressing quite as firmly as I am. It can also be flipped the other way. There could be a brush pen that is more of a medium thickness when applying pressure, but if you write with a super heavy hand, it could jump up into the large category. So to me, these labels are kind of interchangeable and you can likely achieve both a medium and a large size of lettering with these pens. But where the differences really lie are between the small brush pens and then this medium to large-ish category. To me, small brush pens are kind of a category of their own. They have this tiny but flexible nib that allows you to get those beautiful thick and thin strokes that you need for calligraphy, but because the tip is so small, it tends to be a little bit easier to control. These are some of the brush pens that I would say fall into this category. So let's talk about how to decide which one is right for you. There are a few different things that you'll want to consider. Yes, for starters, the size. That is a really big one and it's really important. If you're wanting to hand letter in a journal or addressing envelopes, you're probably not going to want to use a large brush pen because you won't be able to write very many words on the page before you run out of space. In this scenario, I'd probably stick more to a smaller size brush pen, but on the flip side, if you're lettering a short phrase on a sign or a piece of art, you're probably going to want to stick with a larger brush pen. Otherwise you may not notice the differentiation between thick and thin strokes. You also may notice any shakiness more easily, and you might notice some streakiness in your strokes because the brush pen's not putting out as much ink as some of the brush pens with a larger tip. In general, it would probably just be kind of hard to do this type of lettering with a really small size brush pen. But beyond that, there are a few more things to consider. The first is paper. One question to ask is how thick is your paper? If it's thin, make sure you're not using a super juicy brush pen unless you're okay with it bleeding through the page. So while the Sharpie stain brush pen is one of my absolute favorite brush pens, I wouldn't typically use it for something like Bible journaling because it would bleed right through my pages. Another thing is how smooth is your paper? If you aren't able to find a smooth paper, you might want a less delicate brush pen that can handle a little bit more texture without getting frayed. The Pentel Touch is an example of one of these. Another thing to consider is color. Some brush pens have an amazing color range and others just do not. Again, I'm not trying to pick on Sharpie stain because I do love them so much, but I am not a fan of almost all of the colors. If they came out with a pack in pastels or in neutrals, honestly, almost anything else, I'd be so excited. But for now, I really just love the black. But on the other hand, Pentel Touch brush pens, Rytec brush pens, and Zebra Mildliner brush pens all have amazing color combinations. With those, you can find neutrals, you can find more muted tones, and just really pretty colors that could help you to liven up a journal, or make a card beautiful, or something else where you're just really focusing on your color scheme. 
things like price, availability to your location, and how comfortable the actual body of the pen is to hold are also important. Some of these are really specific to you, so it's not really a one-size-fits-all. I've tried pens that others have loved, but they are really uncomfortable for me to hold because of the grip that I use when holding my pen. So for some of these things, it really does just come down to personal preference. I know there are a lot of different details that change from brush pen to brush pen, but I think if you ask me to choose just one brush pen that I would recommend starting with, I think I'd have to say that a great place to start is just using the one that you already have. Getting to know your specific brush pen, even if you've been lettering for a long time, is part of learning how to hand letter. And I actually have a day on that in my brush lettering course because it's so important and I think foundational to learning how to hand letter. If you've not heard of my brush lettering course, it's called 21 Days to Better Brush Lettering and it's kind of just what it sounds like. It's a 21 day course that helps you learn how to hand letter using a brush pen. I can link it below if you're interested in learning more, but it's really a journey that you take just one day at a time and you slowly build on your skills day after day until hopefully you feel really confident in your hand lettering. My goal with this course was to design it in a way where you get to the end of it and realize that you've learned so much, but that it was also fun and you weren't stressed out doing it. I kind of want you to be amazed at your own hand lettering progress while simultaneously being able to say, that was so easy. I also have an entire playlist of lettering basics videos just like this one, so I'll link that for you here. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you over in that next video.